Let's look at how you might use moving loads in visual analysis. I'm going to draw a track here, if you will, of members that I'd like a moving load to be applied to. And we'll go ahead and just have it curl around something like this. But if you take a look at what I've done here, my local X axes for the members are switching. Everything over here on the left or on the right is going to the right and on the left is going to the left. An important thing about moving loads is that if you want them to follow a string of members, you need to make sure the X axis points in the same direction. So I'm going to select each of these and reverse their local axes. So when we get all done, everything is consistent. So this is important to make sure that your local axes are all pointed in the same direction around the chain as they are here. Now, to create a moving load, we need to have a moving load case. Those are created using the load manager or load case manager. So let's select that and select the advanced cases tab. And under the advanced cases tab, we have the ability to create a moving load case. We're going to go ahead and select that and the following dialog pops up. We have first off a way to name it by changing its name. We can choose for the truck load to be one of two predefined loads, the ASHO HS20 short and long trucks, as well as we can create a new truck. And let's do that. Let's suppose our moving load has a couple of axles. So I'm going to select new truck in this dialog. Let's just call it truck one. And let's say the first axle starts out at a hundred or a thousand pounds. And then we have another thousand pound axle at five feet from this one. So now we have two axle loads at zero and at five feet. And let's also suppose we have a uniform lane load of 10 pounds per foot as well. So I'll say save changes and now I have my new custom truck set up and I'll say OK. And for the truck, then if I drop down the dialog, I can select my custom truck. So I'm doing that. The next thing we have to deal with is which load, which members we want to load. Loading members is kind of tricky in that they must form what VA thinks as a valid chain. What that means is there can be no gaps in the members. Well, here are all our members and they did, don't have any gaps. We know that when we drew them, so I'm going to select them all, but it's still telling me no valid members. There's an additional checkbox here regarding local axis match. What that means is you're going to require all your members X axis to point in the same direction and absolutely the same direction, say always pointing in the X direction or in the Y. We know ours don't. They kind of curve as it goes around our track. That's not a requirement that they have to match. So I'm going to uncheck that. And as soon as I do that, it says I have valid members. So that's good. And I've got my members selected. The final thing is the reversible checkbox. That just means this truck can turn around and go the other way. Because of the axle spacings I've chosen, it really doesn't need to be reversible. So I'm going to uncheck that and that'll speed up the analysis a little bit. So we're going to say OK and now say close out this dialog. And notice now our service case is our new moving load case and we have our loads showing on the structure going around one for each span. So that's how you create a moving load case and moving loads. If you select one of those loads, we can come over to the Modify tab in the project manager and we can change some of the requirements. Um, we could edit the members that are selected and so forth. So that summarizes then how we create a moving load case in visual analysis. In another video, we'll look at how we, how we deal with the results from a moving load case.